Rutherford Backscattering Spectroscopy by Michelle Bertram, Christian Cornejo, Ezekiel Nunez, and Morgan Ruiz, undergraduates of the Material Science Department at Arizona State University. This lab will be conducted to introduce students to Rutherford Backscattering Spectroscopy, also known as RBS. Students will see how the composition and thickness of thin layer films can be simulated through the use of a specialized software known as ROM. The ultimate goal of this lab experiment is to identify the composition and thickness of a copper-silver thin sample that was grown on a silicon wafer substrate. Before we get into the principal operations of RBS, it is key to know the history of Rutherford scattering. Rutherford scattering was discovered in 1911 by scientist Ernest Rutherford. He shot energetic particles at gold foil, expecting these particles to pass straight through due to the plum pudding model of an atom, but found that these particles were scattered instead. He came to a conclusion that there must be a mass that caused the scattering, which later became to be known as a nucleus. This discovery led to the foundation of the Rutherford model of the atom and later the Bohr model. RBS utilizes this discovery by detecting the scattered electrons that come back, hence backscattering. Backscattering occurs when energetic particles hit the nucleus of atoms within the sample and are reflected back into the detector. This collision between particles is elastic, which means that no energy is transferred. The energetic particles are then picked up by a detector that measures the angle of reflection. This angle is important because different elements will create different reflective angles as they're backscattered off the surface. RBS is a non-destructive surface and depth profiling characterization technique. Through the use of spectroscopy and software analysis, you can determine both the composition and the individual layer thickness of a sample. It operates on the principle of bombarding a sample with high energy, low mass ions, such as a hydrogen nucleus or a helium alpha particle and determining the angle at which these ions are backscattered off the sample. Because of this, RBS typically has a detection limit of two micrometers. In order to determine the path that the ion takes after being scattered back, the system requires ultra high vacuum to allow the ions to reach the backscatter detector. The image to the right shows this mechanism with an incoming primary beam causing backscattered alpha particles that are then measured by a detector. For this experiment, we grew a copper-silver thin film sample deposited on an unknown passivation layer on a silicon wafer substrate. The samples were then annealed at varying times in a commercial microwave. This annealing should introduce oxidation of the copper-silver surface layer. We will be looking at how this layer changes as the annealing time increases. RBS will provide us information on the thickness of these layers, what the passivation layer is composed of, and any other changes that might have occurred from the microwave annealing. For this lab, the RBS machine at Arizona State University was used. The components of this machine include a large room length particle accelerator, a chamber that maintains ultra high vacuum, a sample mount to place the samples in the chamber, and a detector to determine the angle which particles are backscattered after interacting with the sample. From left to right, you can see the entirety of the RBS, the inside of the chamber, and the sample holder necessary for this experiment. <coughs> RBS gives raw data that we can plot. Using the simulation software RUMP, 
the RBS curves are analyzed to determine weight composition of elements and actual thickness. What needs to be known beforehand are the number of layers in the sample, the elements present in each layer, and an approximate thickness for each of them. RUMP then utilizes this information to simulate curves. The user has to input and manipulate the data entered to match the curves as closely as possible. Simulation curves correspond to theoretical data based on the known information. On the right hand side of the screen shows a screenshot of what the RUMP software looks like. RUMP determines the thickness in terms of area density. Remember this so you don't confuse the value of the density for thickness. Further calculations must be done to find the exact thickness value. The red line shows the simulation created by RUMP during layer by layer simulation. This analysis includes manipulating the individual layer thickness and composition while assuming an extremely large substrate layer. Each layer simulation will be unique. This simulation corresponds with characteristic spectra for each unique element. In this spectrum, from left to right, you can see a characteristic peak for nitrogen, a ledge for silicon, and then peaks of varying intensities and in width for copper and silver. In addition, the elemental composition and thickness of each layer is given, determining that this sample has a large silicon substrate layer, a layer of thickness 100 per centimeter squared of silicon nitride, a passivation layer of thickness 630 per centimeter squared of silver, and a surface layer of thickness 50 per centimeter squared of copper and silver. In conclusion, this lab allowed for students to see the operations of an RBS machine in person rather than just understanding the mechanism in theory. It proves to be a powerful technique in materials characterization because the information obtained is a spectrum that contains data of both composition and thickness and was useful in analyzing the unknown sample for this lab. The drawbacks of this characterization technique is that it requires simulation techniques through RUMP, so data interpretation is time-consuming though incredibly useful in characterizing materials. Like, comment, and subscribe, and remember to watch other videos on this channel for other characterization techniques. Thank you.